Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Roberto Corona. I am an Italian anthroposopher and astrologer and in this video we will try to delve deeper into the recent Israeli-Palestinian conflict from the astrological perspective. Now please note that I am not an expert on geopolitics nor on the situation in the Middle East, so I'm just going to highlight some very interesting and quite strong relationships that we can find by looking at the charts of the two sides involved. Now, of course, in the last two videos, we talked about in detail about the transit of Comet Nishimura, uh, which is in very close relation to the last two lunations. So I recommend you to watch my last two videos to understand the relationships between the passage of the comet and the last eclipses, especially, uh, of course, the uh, October uh, 14 eclipse. So in that video, we talked about a karmic release of humanity, a release that we will see why it is actually affecting the Middle East. In particular, we saw how the solar eclipse of October 14 in Libra was happening in close conjunction with the passage of Comet Nishimura, you can see that in green here, uh, aligned with the eclipse. Now, the uh, eclipse was happening at 21 Libra and Nishimura was uh, a degree away from it at, at 22. So, due to this alignment, we can say that all the negative astral forces that was released during the solar eclipse out in the cosmos will not fall back on Earth with the next eclipse, which is going to be a lunar eclipse happening on October 28, because the comet will collect this astral garbage and uh, get rid of it. Otherwise, uh, the effect would be that this garbage would come back down to Earth again due to the fact that the lunar eclipse is basically doing the opposite. So a solar eclipse expels out in the cosmos these astral uh, energies that are noxious and uh, a lunar eclipse would bring them down back to Earth. And this is not going to happen because this process involving the, the comet is uh, a process of help coming from the spiritual world, which was uh, guided by the first hierarchy, uh, in particular the uh, seraphim and the cherubim. And it was perfectly aligned uh, with the solar eclipse to help humanity in this uh, tragic moment. So let's start by looking at the chart of Israel, the state of Israel, and as you can see, the chart features a uh, sun in Taurus here in the 8th house, a uh, moon in Leo up here in the 10th, and Libra rising. Now, the sun in Taurus in the 8th house represents a very territorial state, such as Taurus can be, centered on financial and economic issues, Taurus 8th house issues, Whereas the moon, which always represents the people in mundane astrology, is in Leo. Therefore, a people who feel like proudly claiming their sovereignty, uh, Leo being the zodiac sign of kings and sovereigns. In particular, the ascendant is only two degrees from the solar eclipse. As you can see, we have uh, 23 uh, degrees in Libra ascendant. And we can say that the very identity of Israel, if not the entire country, has been affected by the eclipse because the ascendant, as we know, is the most powerful spot in a natal chart. Now, the lord of the ascendant is Venus, the ruler of Libra, and as you can see, we have Venus in Cancer in the ninth house, and we can translate this as an interest towards the uh, foreign countries. The ninth house represents, in fact, the relationship with uh, foreign countries, which in Cancer are concerned, these relationships, with a defensive, a protective 
aspect. And we can think of the, um, the sun of the United States of America because uh, in the chart it features a sun in Cancer. In addition to that, we can note that the North Node is in Taurus here in the seventh house, meaning that the karma which has been unleashed by the eclipse is connected to other states in general, because the seventh house represents the relationship with other states, but it is also traditionally the house of open enemies, so it makes sense. And uh, in the first house, of course, we can find the south node. And this means that the eclipse happening on the cusp of the first house, the ascendant, activated this axis. Now, the government is usually represented by Saturn, especially so in this case, because we can, as we can see, Saturn is up here in Leo. And it is uh, Saturn in Leo, meaning that it is not uh, a good placement for the Saturn being the, the placement of its exile. And uh, it is in conjunction with Pluto. For this reason, we can say that the state of Israel and its government features very powerful energies represented, of course, by Pluto, that can also become quite repressive, being Saturn in Leo, this image of an old king who doesn't want to leave the throne, so to speak. So we also have a stellium in Leo, this heap of four planets in Leo. Now, some astrologers do not consider a stellium to be such if all the planets are not in conjunction. In this case, Mars is not conjunct the others. As you can see, Mars is a little bit far away from Saturn and uh, Pluto. I personally consider it to be a stellium, especially because um, the way that I uh, translate, I interpret stelliums. So there is this uh, technical effect due to the fact that we have an excess of Leo energy. And due to, due to this effect called an antiodromy, which means literally running into its opposite, basically an excessive Leo energy tends to fall or to turn into its opposite, which in this case would be uh, Aquarius. So in practice, this energy is too much and tends to fall or turn into its opposite, that is, in Aquarius, and in the fourth house, that is, the house of the homeland. And this means that the state, at the cost of being recognized, at the cost of having control, brings true patriotic revolutions inside its own territory, as we, we witnessed the, these decades. So let's now take a look at the chart of Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, first of all, we're not sure about the time of birth of this chart, so our considerations will unfortunately be very limited. However, Netanyahu's chart features an extraordinary alignment, especially in regards to the recent uh, eclipse. Now, as you can see, this chart features both the luminaries, the sun and the moon, in conjunction here with the south, with the south node. And what is it? This is, by definition, a solar eclipse. So this means that Netanyahu was born during a solar eclipse. And not only that, but not like a random solar eclipse, but the very same solar eclipse that we had on October 14th. So that was the solar eclipse in Libra of October 21, 1949. As you can see, solar eclipse in Libra happening on the south node. And again, on October 14th, what did we have? A solar eclipse in Libra happening on the south node. This is a truly, uh, this is an extraordinary alignment that should uh, make us think because uh, now we don't want, of course, to condemn as evil uh, like people who were born during an eclipse. However, it is clear that this situation, this karma, belonged to Netanyahu since his birth. 
And now this karma has been unleashed by the very same eclipse that he basically encountered through his uh, process of incarnation on, on Earth. So definitely uh, by looking at his chart, we can understand that he is now called to solve this very uh, the very same karma that was uh, released back then. So we can ask ourselves, will he be up to this task? So, so far, given the, the brutal countermeasures that he took after the attack by Hamas, we can say that Netanyahu is failing in his task. However, there is still time to think again, to recover and uh, improve the situation. Now, specifically, if we look at the eclipse, the moon here is at 19 Libra, and it was hit by, uh, by the eclipse itself, but to be honest, it doesn't matter because he was born during the same, during the day of the same kind of phenomena. However, uh, we have to say that the moon is uh, a very fast moving planet and can change a lot in 24 hours since we don't have the, the right birth time. We're not certain that the moon was actually there. However, it is likely that this is the case because this stellium in Libra, uh, if we follow the same effect that I have described before, falls or turn into its opposite in Aries uh, energy towards the, the North Node. And this makes sense. In fact, we would otherwise have to ask ourselves why a person with all these planets in Libra has a martial political alignment, let's say, that which best suits Aries energy, right? And this is precisely due to this technical effect where an excess of Libra energy, in this case, runs into its opposite, which is Aries. Now concerning transits, unfortunately, the chart is again not certain. We cannot make uh, more detailed considerations. However, Mars transited through Libra recently and from mid-September began to transit over his natal planets uh, in the same sign. And at the beginning of October, when the attack was launched, Mars was in conjunction with his natal sun. And this is a cycle. This happens every two years for everyone. Uh, but this time it happened together uh, with other circumstances. It happened with the natal sun receiving a square by Pluto. Now we know that Pluto is at the very end of um, Capricorn and it is uh, squaring its sun, his sun. And on top of that, of course, the eclipse released this huge process that was basically written in his birth chart. So this eclipse is his. It is his time to really solve uh, this very complicated uh, karma. And on top of that, in April 2024, Netanyahu will have the lunar nodes return, meaning that this karmic situation will reach a peak for him. And with the, uh, with the return of the nodes, we are supposed to make very, very important choices that are going to open for us two different branches of karma. So we need to pick one. Uh, on October uh, 2, 2024, Unfortunately, he is going to have a solar eclipse on its natal Mercury up here. And this is, of course, not ideal, especially if this chart is accurate, because in that case, Mercury would be the ruler of the seventh house, bringing, again, tensions and conflicts towards other countries or open enemies. In my opinion, this might not be the exact time of birth because of this um, Venus on the Ascendant, which is, um, well, questionable. So 
Anyways, this is why Netanyahu was hit so hard by this eclipse and we can only imagine the effect of having in front of you astral energies that were basically the same that uh, we encountered during our birth. That should be very, very intense. Let's now take a look at the chart of the attack by Hamas. In fact, it is also possible to understand uh, which energies were at work in that moment. And from the perspective of electional astrology, it is unfortunately a suitable chart for uh, an attack uh, because those working for evil doings have an advantage from having strong but debilitated planets uh, in the chart of the event. Now, the first debilitated planet, as you can see, is the sun sitting on the ascendant. It was about like uh, sunrise at the moment of the attack. And it is a sun in Libra, which is in its fall. And after that, we can immediately find in the first house another debilitated planet, Mars, which being in Libra is in its exile, right? And as you can see here, Mars is in tight conjunction with the South Lunar Node. As you can see, again, a very karmic spot, like uh, karma is always involved here. As you can see, it is a pattern. And we discussed about this Mars especially if you um, re-watch my video about the full moon in Aries. Now we describe that uh, effect like Mars in Libra in conjunction with the South Node as forces of destruction, because the South Node is always about destruction, brought about in the name of justice, because Mars, the god of war, is in Libra, the zodiac sign of justice. Now, on top of that, the chart features a T-square between Moon, Mars, and Pluto, as you can see here. And they are uh, all three placed in angular houses. And this creates a very strong and destructive tension in the chart. However, at least this Moon is quite strong, being in Cancer and uh, in its domicile. And uh, this may have brought less damage than hoped by the terrorists. However, the Moon is suitable. Why is that? Because it is decreasing in light and this is favorable for uh, destroying things. So we have a waxing Moon that increases things, whereas the waning Moon uh, is suitable for destroying or getting rid of something. So this was in favor of the attack, especially if it is in the last quarter, as you can see here, the moon and the sun are making a square aspect, uh, because this is a, uh, a crisis moon. This is a moment for uh, a crisis in the overall theory of the phases of the moon. So at this point, one might wonder whether the choice of this moment was random or prepared according to astrological laws because it is quite appropriate for their, uh, their goal. Moving on, we have the chart of the Palestinian people. Unfor unfortunately, we don't have much consistent data in this case. So I am going to use the chart of the Proclamation of Palestinian Independence. And there are other charts that can be used. So I have to take uh, this one and with a grain of salt, of course. Uh, I took as a reference the work of Jamie Partridge, an Australian astrologer who runs the website astrologyking.com. So I'm going to leave uh, the link to the to his website down in the description box. And as you can see, this chart was uh, for the proclamation on independence. So on November 15, 1988, the Palestinian National Council meeting in Algiers approved a declaration, a declaration proclaiming the independence of the state of Palestine with Jerusalem as its capital. Note that uh, also in this case, 
we have the south node here in the first house and the other node, of course, in the opposite um, seventh house. And this obviously resonates again with this karma uh, with uh, the chart of the state of Israel that features the two nodes in the same exact placement, at least according to the houses. Now, um, let's remember that Hamas certainly does not represent the Palestinian people, even if, unfortunately, it shares uh, their fate. Now, let's take a look at the chart. So we have, in this case, Scorpio, a Scorpio sun in the fourth house, a Capricorn moon sitting on the cusp of the sixth house, and Leo rising. Now, this sun in Scorpio here in the fourth house is a strong nationalism that wants to eradicate evil from its territory. And this is because this is what Scorpio does. It eradicates evil. Whereas the moon in Capricorn is a people who is struggling, is, uh, is suffering, is in difficulty, especially because the moon is in detriment in Capricorn. And on top of that is in the sixth house, which is a challenging house, if not a malefic house. Leo rising instead reacts with pride, always aiming to establish its own sovereignty. So this is a recurring theme in both charts, as you can see. Now concerning the eclipse, here we have the eclipse hitting uh, Venus at 19 Libra. And we don't care much about this Venus as the Lord of the third house. This Venus is in conjunction with the cusp of the third. So it is already in the third house. But this is not as interesting as looking at this Venus as the Lord of the tenth house. Because the tenth house is uh, the house of government. And uh, what's interesting is that here Hamas wants to position itself as a representative and guide of the Palestinian people. So in this sense, the eclipse uh, had an effect on this organization, even though we can argue whether we can take the Lord of the Tenth as representing Hamas or not. This chart is very interesting because from a synastry point of view, so if we take the chart of the state of Israel and if we take this chart, we can see that there's a clear rivalry between the two. And this is because both of the luminaries are in opposition. So sun and sun are in opposition and moon and moon are in opposition in the two charts respectively. So the sun, for example, is in this case at 23 Scorpio and in uh, the chart of Israel is at 23 Taurus. So it is in opposition and the same applies to the moons. So we have the Palestinian moon at 28 Capricorn is in opposition to the Israel moon at four degrees Leo, even though it is an out of sign uh, opposition, it is still an opposition. So there would be a lot to say, uh, but for time reasons, we are just going to look at the luminaries and especially because the luminaries help us at least explaining what's happening uh, in the transits of the two countries. So if we take the major transits for Palestine. And now here I'm looking at long lasting transits brought forth specifically by Uranus, Neptune and Pluto through 2021 to 2025. So we are looking at five years. First of all, we notice a long conjunction of transiting Pluto on the natal moon. As you can see, Pluto is from 2021 making this long conjunction on the uh, Palestinian people because the moon in mundane astrology represents the people. And this means persecution and 
also an overwhelming feeling of being persecuted as well. And this resulted, as you can see pointed by this uh, red arrows, in another activation because we have the same planet, Pluto, activating by a sextile Mars. And this uh, Mars is in Aries, so it is a quite strong Mars. And this means that this uh, counterattack, this war brought about in this case by Hamas is belongs basically to the same process but from 2023 as you can see we have this blue wave starting meaning that we have uh, a, a, a long lasting activation of Mars and it is a, a triple activation because Mars is going to be activated not only by Pluto but by Neptune and Uranus as well in the future. So this is happening together with something else. Uh, Uranus reached the Midheaven in the chart of uh, Palestine, and the Midheaven is a very strong point, being one of the angles. And as you can see, the moment that Uranus reaches the Midheaven, it starts opposing the uh, natal sun that we've seen is in the fourth house and this means that we have Uranus bringing sudden events, sudden changes to this sun and so we have the activation of the 10th house not only because the lord of the 10th house Venus was activated by the eclipse but also it was activated by Uranus as well so no surprise that we have this sudden uh, changes that we know Uranus usually uh, brings and we can say that this momentum will not cease as you can see until the first the the first months of 2025 now I want to point out that I certainly do not have the presumption to predict how such a complicated situation will evolve but we can see at least that this opposition is going to last for more than one year and why is this important because now we have taken into account mainly the moon affected by Pluto and the sun affected by Uranus and we can expect the same if we look at uh, Israel's transits right and why is that because we know that the two luminaries of these countries sun and moon are in opposition in the two charts so it makes sense that Uranus itself is now in conjunction with the sun in Taurus of Israel as you can see here because it is making an opposition to uh, the Palestinian sun and as you can see we are now slowly approaching the point uh, when we're going to witness the same planet again Pluto beginning this opposition uh, on the um, Israeli's moon and this means that a very difficult very complicated process is beginning for the Israeli people uh, and I have to say that an opposition by Pluto in the worst case scenario could lead Israel to a dictatorial regime so uh, hopefully not but this is feeling of being overwhelmed or the people being oppressed by a Plutonian energy could really translate into that. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell not to miss out on future astrological insights. I am Roberto Corona. See you in the next video.